So there's always been some oh, business wait, whoa, element. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You had e-commerce <laughs> stores too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, guys, we need like a two hour podcast. Kyle's gonna need to free up some more time for me. <laughs> we need to have a second date. We don't have enough time. <laughs> All right, guys, I have with me Kyle Prinslow. He is a man of many masterful skill sets. I'm super excited to have him here with today because I was telling him earlier, if we were talking about me today, that would be very depressing. But <laughs> we have him today to smile for us and tell us fun and awesome things about himself, what he's learned over the past few years, and uh, me also realizing that I probably need headphones. So let me actually put that in. What's the call it? I got excited, guys. I, we, yeah. You guys would hear Kyle twice, which is cool. It's basically we're duplicating Kyle. But let me let me actually, you know, two is always better than one. But let me go ahead and yeah, testing, testing. Hello, hello. All right, cool. He is in my ear now, ladies and gentlemen. I get the second Kyle. All right. Anyway, jokes aside. All right, Kyle. So give us a little bit, a little bit of backstory on you. Who are you? Where have you been in not locality wise, but what has your journey, your career been, and looked like over the past um, x amount of years? Give us the back your backstory. Yeah, so so first of all, thanks, man. Uh, it's awesome to to be chatting, and uh, more pressure <laughs> after that introduction. <laughs> uh, all the pressure, Kyle. We were, oh wow, that was it just uh, lowered my chair there. That was a very interesting bounce. <laughs> Don't pay attention to that, guys. Pay attention to Kyle. But yes, the pressure is on. Give us the back backstory you have. Okay, so. Um, Wow, it's, it's too much pressure for me to handle now. Um, but <laughs> um, a bit about me. So I am a freelancer now. I also help others become freelancers. In other words, what you would call a teacher, um, you know. <laughs> um, and, and I'm also busy working on uh, software products at the moment. So I'm doing those three. Um, and yeah, um, I think I... I really enjoy it because, you know, when it comes to the teaching side, at least I can still speak from experience because freelancing is still a very big part of my income and sort of what I do today, you know, so really love what I do and yeah, how I got here. Um, obviously, there's a long story and a short story, so I'll give the short version and we can take it from there. So um, I was a marketing manager for a big company uh, for about three years, after about two years, I realized, sheesh, I need to earn like another income. So eventually I found um, uh, web design, studied, uh, you know, how to code, HTML, CSS, things like that. And then uh, got some clients uh, on Fiverr, this is 2015. And then uh, eventually that overtook my full-time income after a year. And then two years later, 2017, I left full-time to go into freelancing. And it's been what now, about six odd years um, freelancing, many different journeys, different types of businesses, you know, in different industries. And I've sort of wound up, wound up here. I've learned a lot throughout the years and I offer web design uh, and marketing services to clients. Uh, so that's pretty much my, the services that I offer from a freelancing perspective. And uh, yeah, um, that's sort of the very, very quick uh, version, you know. Um, so yeah, let me know if you have some follow up questions on that. Yeah, for sure. I would love to dive into uh, the Fiverr landscape because I feel like a lot of people, there's there's a lot of, like even from a hiring perspective or wherever you want to go, there's a perspective on platforms of like, oh, okay, you know, should I go on Fiverr to start? Should I, you know, like, there's a narrative out there where it's just like, oh, only X type of people go to these type of platforms, whether that be Fiverr, Upwork, uh, Freelancer, but there's good people on these platforms and then there's there's good and bad people just like in general, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So can you kind of with your, because you are doing awesome work today, in the beginning, it kind of sounds like to me, it really didn't matter what platform you use to, to yeah. you know, kind of get along, but can you, kind of explain to us maybe at the time why you decided to use Fiverr, how you were able to use Fiverr to then maybe uh, sca build scaffolding to not needing it anymore. Can you kind of like break that down? Especially, mm -hmm. yeah, I think this is like a really good segment yeah. to just talk about Fiverr, the value it brought you and how you were able to transition out of that and how you did that. Yeah, that's actually a great question. So when it comes to freelancing platforms in general, even today, right, it's a uh, it's almost like a taboo topic where people are like, 
sheesh, you know, don't go on these platforms. It's a race to the bottom. You know, you're just wasting your time. But I actually tend to disagree um, because I think it's a great way to get started. And if you do it properly, you've really got nothing to lose. Because as you mentioned, you know, you get people who do it good and you get people who do it bad. You know, it's just the reality, you know, and there's opportunities everywhere, you know, even people who start out on Upwork or Fiverr, uh, Hubsoft Talent, many different platforms, you know, you can still create a great income after a year or two if you do it, you know, on the side or full time or something like that. So back to in terms of when I started, why did I choose Fiverr? That's pretty much all that I knew at the time and it was convenient. Uh, you know, I'm still figuring things out. So it's like, you know, I don't want to overcomplicate it. Let me just go with Fiverr. So what I did here is um, I sort of went some, the different route, right? Because all I knew is web design. And when I talk about web design, I'm talking about the basics, you know, <laughs> I needed an income, you know, I'm not going to wait until I've perfected all these other things, you know, um, I was just winging it. So um, I had an understanding and then it's like, okay, now I looked at the Fiverr side and this principle applies even today, whether you're on Fiverr, Upwork, whatever platform. And I was looking, I'm like, sheesh, most people are saying like, hire me for X, you know, $100 for a website or, you know, five, $5 an hour or something like that. Whereas I sort of flipped it. So I said, I will offer a website analysis report for $5. So what that would be is like a two page PDF where I would go through the website and give suggestions, uh, you know, on how to improve it. And I did that. Mm. Uh, and then, uh, so, 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 so here's an amazing uh, story. So my very, very first client there, uh, he signed up to the $5 uh, package. I upsold him after that because he was happy with it to a hundred dollar wireframe okay uh, on like uh, how i would sort of do it and uh, you know for, for for some people that's a you know a lot of money but for most people you know these days it's not it's not for me i was like wow this thing works this is awesome this validates the idea this is amazing and right. then he went ahead after the the wireframe and i upsold him even further i said listen if you want me to make this wireframe a reality i.e a website that's a thousand dollars so basically this five dollars turned into a thousand dollars and yeah it doesn't stop there which is amazing because this was my very first client and it's crazy he's still my client today and and even so he's referred to me how many different referral clients he's uh, done about about 10 different websites with me over the years um, he's also signed a marketing retainer you know all of those types of things all from five dollars you know so so what i'm trying to say is like if one thinks a bit differently about the strategy in approaching, you know, um, uh, clients on these platforms, flipping it a bit, offering a small, you know, service to get in, over deliver, over deliver, upsell, over deliver, upsell, it can lead to some great opportunities. Yeah, man, I, I lo really love that. And I think that is not something a lot of people do where you kind of had to get in the door the 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 breadcrumbs of the five dollars then <laughs> you over delivered on that you brought in the wireframe and they're like okay well this is great well who's gonna build this they already trust you <laughs> so they're like all right well kyle let's let's go that is when awesome i don't know if you're drinking tea or coffee or something else but that is when of course fire. it's coffee of course oh, okay <laughs> yeah I, I love the color it pops out on the screen it's, <laughs> it's very nice I, 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 chose it, I chose it just for you <laughs> I, I appreciate that you did the what is it the complimentary color i don't even know if it's complimentary guys okay i, I pretend to be a designer i just have a nice tie um <laughs> but uh going back on track let me see if i can find it that is an excellent explanation of like how to stand out, how to give value in different forms and how to make it easy for somebody to be like, oh, five dollars is not that much, but it solves a problem for me and it leads them to, OK, well, I have this and then it's the next, the next. So I think that's that's really smart. I, I, now, did you know to do that? Like what? Because and then why I'm asking this question is because I'm trying to find I feel like this is a I feel like we might stay here for a while. Obviously, we'll get to the yeah, other yeah. cool stuff, but I think, you know, one big thing, especially when you're starting out, platforms are really easy. Like you said, I didn't want to think too much about it. Platform was there, it had clients for me. I just needed, I needed the money, I needed to go, I needed to wing it. All right, cool, we're on the platform. What made you think about this uh, breadcrumb or this, uh, I know there's like a term for it, but it's just like the, the upsell approach where it's just like, get them in, mm. 
low cost and then try to trail up? Like, did you know, was it by accident that you were like, okay, we're going to do a $5 thing or did you learn something <laughs> that you then implemented? If you could dive into that. Um, yeah, so, so, so I, I, I did, and I do have a marketing background. So, so to say that nothing influenced it, I think would not be genuine about it. So I think indirectly that probably helped, um, in thinking objectively about it, because the reality was I went there on, on Fiverr and then I looked at the web design and web development categories and I'm like competing with, um, I mean, I don't know how many, uh, freelancers are on there now, but like let's just say a lot of people, right? Offering like dirt cheap uh, r rates. And it's like, psh, there's no ways I can compete with that. And then through looking on Fiverr, I actually saw that they, I was looking, I'm like, no man, I can't compete here. What else can I do? What? And then eventually I found something about uh, conversion rate optimization or something. Mm. And, I saw, and then I saw these other people, I'm like, they're offering reports. And it's like, Frank yeah so so it's probably like a combination of things so maybe it's just like hey i just saw it uh, there um and then i just thought okay uh, if they're doing this then it's like i could technically keep upselling based on you know that and that and that because it could lead to a website you know so yeah i think it's a, a, a mix of things if that makes sense got you now because you also are a teacher like what is for those who are starting like is this something that you teach like what do you what do you teach to those who are like early on in their journey? Do you tell them to get on a platform? Do you kind of give them like, hey, kind of, you know, this is how I started and you kind of give them the same ropes to, to go on? Or what is your basically trying to like wrap this section up? Like what is yeah, your yeah. basically prescription to those who are trying to start? Do you start them off on a platform? Do you say like, you know, do not even prescribe that? You're just like, you know, kind of go for more, I'm saying higher, more tailored approach where you're actually approaching individuals who own the company. Like what is the approach that you kind of uh, prescribe to your, your students? Yeah, that's actually a great question because uh, before I even get into, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the practical side of like how to do it and all that, I first address like the what, you know, like, yeah. uh, because the issue that I find is a lot of people tend to overcomplicate it, right? And they tend to have to have this perfectionist mindset of like, Whoa, I need 20 to, different things. You know, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 and on top of that, they, they also feel that they have to like, be able to create insane websites, you know, with so much experience before they even trying to get their first client, you know, and they're trying right. to think about all these abstract things about what if this, what if that, what if that instead of like, just get out there and get your first client and then adapt from there and learn as you go, you know? So it's very much a mindset thing that I, that I try and uh, start off with the foundation and then try and build the confidence with because th that's a big thing, right? Um, yeah. And then once you've sort of spoken about that, then it's like, okay, there are plenty of ways on like, uh, you know, getting clients, you know, getting your first client, getting started and all that. And the reality is what is freelancing? It's just literally a service. You're selling a service to make, you know, in exchange for income, you know, it's as simple as that. Now, the thing is we can define the service. What, what type of service can we offer? Is it web design, web development, SEO, content writing, design, uh, email marketing, uh, social media management, ad management, and so on and so on and so on. You know, so it's like, let's define what it is because we need some form of skill that we can offer, right? And I'm a big advocate for actually learning these things because it's a great thing. Obviously, outsourcing is like another thing that one could consider, but let's not go in that. Um, but, but yeah, we've got the skill, you know, we've learned it. And then now it's like, you know, we need to get clients. And where do we find those clients? Where do we get out there? You know, and that's uh, that's the thing where it's a bit different. So it could be uh, freelancing platforms. It could be uh, friends and family, um, often underrated, yeah. especially when starting out, you know, and then obviously there's a lot more other approaches where it's like the long-term approach and the short-term approach, uh, you know, getting into clients. Maybe we can talk about that because I think that's a topic on its own, but I would just sure. say in terms of starting, I would say, you know, the mindset, addressing that, dealing with the confidence things, dealing with the expectation thing, dealing with not being a perfectionist. We've got over that hurdle. Now we need to learn the skill. Once we've got the skill, boom, now we start, uh, you know, uh, the platforms uh, and the other outreach side of things. Got you. Yeah, so let's kind of, let's dive into 
I, I kind of missed how you presented the other topic that we want to dive into. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> because because I was thinking about the other thing I wanted to kind of funnel into because I think you made a couple, or at least summarizing what we went over. Like I like the fact that um, you focused on having one skill set first. You were like, I just web design, web was, did you refer to it as web design or web development? Just for yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, web design in my case, web know? services. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you stuck to one skill set. You found a platform, and you just kept it simple. It was one skill, one platform, and you just had the uh, your three tier tier sort of um, upsell: the five dollar, the hundred dollar uh, wireframe, um, and then you had the thousand dollar. What's it called? The actually building the site, and so you essentially just use that till I because I want to actually know what because uh, there's two things I really want to dive into it's like okay that's how you started but when did you figure out okay this got me here what is that next step for me and what do I actually need to change about what I'm doing to get me to that uh, that different level that is off of Fiverr or what did that sort of scenario for you look like? Did you end up leaving Fiverr? Did you move to another platform? Did you just make better relationships um, and you stuck with them and then it turned into a referral business? Like what what is what is the what is the picture? Hmm. Yeah, so so I wanted to try something different. So I am sure. no longer active on Fiverr for getting clients. <laughs> yeah. Um so, so as expected, I, got... I just wanted the bridge <laughs> for, for autumn uh, for the, the audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, Disclaimer: so, I'm so, no longer on Fiverr. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so after I got the client, I mean that actually le led to a lot of opportunities. You know, uh, referral clients, friends of his, and and all of that. And then yeah. before I knew it, I was like, whoa, okay, this is this is this is pretty cool. I can see the potential of where it's heading. And then on top of that, then I just did like, you know, outreach, uh, SEO, AdWords, like, you know, emails, social media, everything. Like I just tried everything just to try and get more clients because by that stage, uh, you know, I was doing it full time and I'm like, a man needs to eat, you know? <laughs> right. So, so I need more clients, you know? So, um, yeah, I literally tried everything. Got you. So what, what actually stuck? Like you got out of Fiverr, you started doing the email approach, the cold outreach. Um, and this is actually why I'm kind of like trying to drill into this is because I feel like once you have a hang of these th things, like things become a lot easier. Like you, you have questions, but it's not about like, you have questions about, okay, well how, we already know how to get clients, right? Which is like, how do we increase the amount of people that we actually outreach to? Um, it, because we already, we've already learned how to, uh, we've already, we know what our client pain points are. We know how to approach them. We know what their objections are to address when we're actually in conversation with the client who's, you know, they know they need something, but we also need to make sure that they get X, Y, and Z. If they're trying to get to A, like um, what I'm trying to pull out of you is, uh, first off, did people come to you on Fiverr? Because I think that's also another big misconception where it's just like, okay, I'm on Fiverr now. I have the skill. <laughs> I'm offering these three things. <laughs> Where, when client, when, you know, when moon, <laughs> like, did you also do outreach on Fiverr? If so, how did you approach that? And then how did that transition to you to when you did make the change and how you're outreaching to people um, today? Like, yeah, just take us. Yeah. 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 Good one. So uh, Fiverr, no, I yeah. waited for them to come to me. Uh, mm. So interesting. And that worked out pretty, yeah. pretty nicely then it seemed yeah. at the time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Very cool. Um, and then Upwork, um, I, I was not on Upwork, um, you know, as a freelancer, um, but I'm fr from from fellow freelancers whom I speak to who do well on Upwork, they actually say that they start out doing outreach and applying to pretty much every project that they can do. And then eventually, yeah. you know, clients apply uh, to them and then they increase their rate and so on and so on. Um, and then in terms of your other question, um, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but but essentially you're trying to ask like, wh what are my favorite ways or best ways now yeah. um, to get clients now, pretty much. Exactly. Okay. So, um, yeah, uh, as I mentioned, uh, sorry, <clears throat> it's getting emotional for me. I can't, I can't even speak. <laughs> it's the coffee and the tears. It's, just, it's coming back to me. 
<laughs> Reminiscence. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, um, as I mentioned earlier, I, I've pretty much like tried everything, you know, um, like really. So, so, so in terms of uh, what I really enjoy, obviously excluding referral clients and all of that type of stuff, um, the tip that I can give, what I've learned yeah. is quality versus quantity. And it sounds so, you know, fluffy, but uh, for, for example, I, I was actually just replying to a guy um, today and uh, his, uh, his niche or his um, agency is focused on SaaS founders. And he was asking me, how can he do outreach on LinkedIn, for example? Mm. And I told him, I'm like, listen, 100 qualified leads are better than a thousand general leads. And then I said, if you really want to go the extra mile and this uh, uh, principle applies regardless of whether it's LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, emails, whatever to get clients, you need mm. to personalize it. It takes more time to do so, you know. So, for example, if you you can't send a message, uh, which a lot of people do these days on outreach or general messages like, hey, you know, I've seen your site, uh, it needs improvement. Would you like to schedule a free call? You know, or would you like a free report that I can send you or something like it? Everyone receives right. it, right? Whereas if you take an initiative and you actually show like, hey, she went through your website, it's actually pretty good, but I noticed that, you know, maybe there's some 404 errors or, you know, some design issues or blah, 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 blah. And then you've got your suggestions, but you record a Loom video, like a two to three minute Loom video. So it's completely personal, personalized, you know, for that person. Yes, it takes longer to approach that uh, you know, um, lead, but I can yeah. guarantee you get a much better conversion rate and response rate from that, you know. Um, so again, it's a thing of quality versus quantity and the principle applies whether you're doing LinkedIn outreach, which is very good, Twitter outreach, uh, Instagram outreach, and so on. I mean, for example, um, you know, I, uh, uh, on Twitter, Right, I, I yeah. approached this guy and he's a course creator. This was a few years ago. And I said like, hey man, I noticed you selling courses and you're doing very well, this and this and this. You know, I noticed your sales page. Um, if you had to, let's say for example, add a video or do this, do this, add more tiers. And I actually like gave him a design, you know, and if I'm not mistaken, I don't think I recorded a video back then because this was like a, quite a while ago, but I actually literally designed it. I'm like, you know, yeah, you go. He actually wanted to pay me like $500 just to say thank you. And I actually said no. And then a few months later, I actually pitched him to sign up on, a, well, back then it was a two and a half grand uh, uh, marketing retainer to help him with a lot of stuff. So I'm right. just saying like, you know, you add and you add value upfront and it's amazing the opportunities that can come from it. Obviously there's many different examples, but that was just one that just came to my mind now. Yeah, it's it's a very like I feel this is a difficult for people to like hear because there's like I'm looking for they're looking for the answer. But even like in your example, right, like the the way that you operate on Fiverr, the way that you operate with this one particular, you know, uh, within this one particular story that you just gave and maybe just how you between um, how you approach this guy in the last story versus how you approached with some other uh, potential clients with like a, a loom recording like there is no one way you approach a potential customer you kind of have to be like i want them i want to work with them mm. what do what is the best way for me to approach these people and um you figure out the best solution to approach these people like for this one guy you actually built the solution you sent it to him you said no to the money that they wanted to give you and it's like it's money on the back end and a lot of the i'm sure a lot of the people that you talk to too they kind of think of it like uh almost in school where it's like i did the work i have the skill i should get the grade mm. and it's just mm. like <laughs> no <laughs> you have to <laughs> you really have to think uh, you really have to think you have to mm -hmm. you have to be like I want this how uh, or you know I want these people how will these people think about how I decide to approach them and kind of crafting that way that you're going to approach them uh, based on how you see people either interacting with them or a way that you 
um, can actually stand out. You, basically, mm -hmm. you've said like quality over quantity, but it's not only, and I'm not summarizing here, I'm not trying to do, mm -hmm. you're still yeah. on the soapbox, Kyle, okay? I've not stepped on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that phrase means. Like every time I say it, I'm like, do they wash themselves on the soapbox? Like, what is that? <laughs> Um, maybe you guys in the in the in the comments can enlighten us both unless Kyle you have that answer yeah yeah I do know but but don't worry carry on okay. <laughs> that will be the end of this pod yeah. th this episode guys we will we will unveil what the soapbox means I just imagine a whole bunch of I Irish spring um, but <laughs> that aside the like I love the fact in summary the quality over quantity but also to tack on to that like the the how do you stand out to and that's part of the that's part of like your equation of quality so i, I love that yeah yeah um, and, uh, and, if I, and, and if i can just mention one thing that and that is actually sure. very important you know as you were speaking i was also just thinking like uh, it, it's quite simple you know you have to put yourself in the shoes of someone and, and pretend and pretend that you were the one being approached being pitched you know I mean, you get so many pictures like every day. What what type of message would you actually find helpful? What type of message right. would you actually respond to? You know, and uh, I, I mean, for example, um, I reached out to this uh, leader was earlier in in the year, about January or February, and this is a, like a client that I wanted, right? Um, right. Amazing guy, amazing business, everything, and it took months for him to reply. And uh, you know, I first started my initial response like in November last year. And then I tried to follow up again in uh, January, didn't respond. Yeah. February, February, I was tenacious. I went after him like a lion, you know, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and but, but yes, what I did, I didn't just say, hey, the, I'm just following up. This is my last message. In the final message, I actually went all out. I actually spent about like, well, when I say all out, I mean, like I spent like 15 minutes, uh, like doing a loom recording on his website on his business on my suggestions and that was like my final pitch and i'm just like hey you know you know if you want to work together let's you know let me know otherwise if not you know all the best type thing um and it's amazing like like i think it was like the next day he responded you know and yeah. that turned into actually actually my biggest client um to date you know um so so yeah i just want to say like um it's also that desire and that action, uh, you know, uh, the tenacity, as I say, you know, you're following up, you're following up, you're following up, you know, you're really approaching these people, you're adding value, you know, um, and uh, yeah, I think I think those are important takeaways. Yeah, I love it, man. And I, I think we'll, oh, I really want to talk about like the art of following up because that's another thing, you know, yeah, I literally <laughs> was uh, talking to somebody yesterday and, you know, kudos to them, like I we sat together we crafted message like we did research on like the ceo um and we just crafted like i helped them craft like a little bit of a framework of like how to uh kind of research these people um how based on like their online stuff right like how people have approached them what they responded to what they didn't respond to just doing like your cia work right and f figuring out how you can best approach them um, they did get the mess. They sent the message very short, very clean, um, to the point, nothing, uh, I, like I said in the past, like I like to make friends. There's a whole bunch of different <laughs> yeah. ways of, of approaching. Right. So we kind of did that spin. The, the message was read, but you know, the person who sent it, they were kind of bummed. They're like, damn, they left me on red. And I'm like, that doesn't that's not the end right like you just mentioned yeah. like you you month after month you t after two after five months after like you know half a <laughs> year um like ha can you explain like uh how you approach follow-ups or if in short you're like hey honestly i could i could literally sit here for 15 minutes and t tell you all this but here's kind of where i learned my my follow-up <laughs> game is there is there a resource people can just uh, we can just drop in the link or in the in the in the description where people just click and like great here's the kyle prinslow approach in uh <laughs> in, in a, a a basket or how how do you want to go about it? do you want to talk about it? is there a resource we can um jump into or both uh yeah so so i don't have a resource but but it's pretty short and sweet you know like like um i think the facts are if you look at the if you look at the data on the follow-ups 
most clients don't say yes to the first time that you reach out. It's something like the between um, follow up four to no, follow up seven, depending on the type of service that you're offering. Um, you know, um, so 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 what what does that say? You know, that yeah. that says that a lot of people. You know, uh, for example, I spoke to this guy recently. He's like, hey, you know, um, I'm struggling to get a client, and I say, how many clients have you reached out to? Seven. Uh, how many messages did you send? Uh, just one, each. Uh, okay, that's your problem. You know what I mean? Uh, you need to increase that in terms of the n- the number of people that you reach out to, the number of follow ups that you have, and obviously there's, I mean, you you can talk about this. You know, the different strategies that you have in the follow ups. You know, maybe it's your direct one, maybe it's the second one. You're going to show a result on the clients, um, but a lot of these people make it very sleazy, and I just you know hate that sort of sleazy approach. Oh, you know, you're making me cry. You know, did I do something wrong? And no, don't do that, you know, um, you know, just get to the point. And also the other thing is, Brandon, is when it comes to the follow up, don't just focus on the message. What you should do is you should, if you really want this client, look where they hang out. Are they on LinkedIn, Twitter, are they in communities? Uh, what are they doing, you know? So then try and engage with them on all their different platforms and actually read the stuff that they post out. If they're linking to things, anything that you can actually engage with, see it as a long-term thing, as you mentioned, you know, um, rightfully so. You're building a relationship. You know, you can't just go for the kill straight in, you know? Sometimes it's just that awareness of like, you follow up, follow up, follow up, leave it, and then just engage, follow, you know, really be interested in this person. And then eventually, you know, follow up again. And then maybe it's a video, maybe it's a content, maybe it's just like a report for free, whatever it is, you know, just keep being persistent. That's pretty much my takeaway on that. I love it, man. And actually, I want to ask you, I want to see how open you are with this. Would you actually mind no names involved? Would you mind if uh, we actually took like examples of like your initial message, your follow up and a third follow up? Yeah, no names. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that, like sure. that we can stick in here. Is that, yeah, would that yeah, be cool? Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right, for cool, sure, guys. Yeah. We have four for sure's. So if you're watching this right now, just look at the screen at these very specific <laughs> messages. This is the Prinslow approach. Read and repeat. Okay. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. That would be that would be really awesome to have. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll follow up with you after on that. Okay, so cool. we'll close that. Let's talk about, you've got freelance, but you also have this super kick-ass SaaS product you're building. And actually, I've never asked before. Is this the first product you've built? Are there several? How how many children, technological children, do you have? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I mean, there have been a few small things in the past, like Google Chrome extensions and all that. But I mean, in terms of uh, the main one, uh, I would say this is this is it, you know. And I'm really, really excited about this child. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, and and hopefully next year there's going to be another one. Um, uh, <laughs> oh uh, man, we're active. Yeah, we're active. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, man, it's been it's been a work in progress. Eh? So, in, so so maybe for some context, so so the SaaS is it's yeah. called ClientManager.io, and it's the simple uh, onboarding and client management tool for freelancers and agencies. So basically, when it comes to onboarding clients, you need some information. When it comes to managing clients, projects, and so on and so on, man, the, it's uh, it's good. Uh, I'm I'm getting excited because uh, it's not it's not just me because I'm not I'm not a developer to create this. So so I'm just sort of like stepping back and you know uh, hoping that everyone uh, hoping that the other guys do it nicely. So so I've got some an amazing small team uh, working on this with me and uh, it's been like for almost a year now and hopefully we'll be launching in december december 2022 i don't know when this will go out but anyway Mm. um yeah and uh it's it's coming together nicely i've heard some good feedback and i'm really excited because the the goal is to launch it and then just keep you know improving it because it's a practical tool that that i want to use um you know where it deals with you know uh, signatures contracts task management you know getting the information from the client you know um, proposals like so much practical stuff that you actually need you know working with a team you know or solo whatever and uh man I, i'm just really excited so hopefully soon it's gonna launch and yeah that's that's it <laughs> 
All right, cool beans. Well, we'll look out for December. And also, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I'll put the, the links to that in the chat when it does come out so you guys can check it out. Um, Thanks. I want to, what got you into and in, in, interested in building SaaS? Were you like, okay, freelance, we got this, we are on lock, we have the, you, you know, we have the clients, <laughs> we have the process, like, I'm good. Um, we can just, this can go swimmingly over here, but I'm kind of bored and or want to, you know, test my chops into something else slash evolve. Um, is that kind of where you were like, let's, you know, let's play, let's play in the SAS, uh, the, the slack, the, the slash, I was about to say slack, the SAS arena. Um, you know, is that kind of how it came about or how did you get your, uh, the taste for wanting to build within the SAS? Yeah, that's actually, it's actually a good question because, um, I mean, ever since I was about a teenager, 12 years old to be exact, I've always wanted to be in business. How that looked like, I don't know. Um, and th various things along the way. Uh, and um, a few years ago, uh, we actually had a very good um, e-commerce business, two of them actually. And um, I'm no longer in that at the moment, sold it, uh, those ones. So there's always been some oh, wait, business whoa, element. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You had e-commerce <laughs> stores too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, guys, we need like a two hour podcast. Kyle's gonna need to free up some more time for me. <laughs> we need to have a second date. We don't have enough time. <laughs> so, e com yeah. first, then SAS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, so this SAS is completely new. And, and, and the thinking behind it was I've got a lot of ideas for e commerce, but I realized it's that and it's proven you know i mean you know we can make it work and so on but it's like I, I want something that you build one sell twice you know whereas a physical product you can't do that and i've always been interested in the software models you know um because i think it's uh, it's, it's a fantastic model um you know and um and then it's more like okay i've been waiting for that thing of like what i wanted to create and and i felt when i was ready when i had the frustration and you know the finances to do so and it's yeah. like Let's just do it, you know, uh, let's just do it now. And uh, yeah, so, so so I feel um, equipped, but I feel that I'm also ready to learn more uh, as we go, you know, because it's still very new. I love it, man. Oh, dude, I had no idea you were in, in e-commerce. So it's like, <laughs> and can if you could explain to us really quick, because I have no idea what you meant by sell, uh, build once, sell twice. Can you kind of oh, break that down for yeah. us? Yeah, because that's a concept yes. I'm not familiar with. Oh sure. So 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 for example, if I um, if I am selling products, right, and I'm selling these like Apple wires, right? Yeah. I buy it from, let's say China or wherever. You know, I package it, send it out. You know, I made a sale. If I want to make another sale, to bring another one in, store it, right? Package it, sell it. So you know, so I'm buying one, I'm selling one. The, and the concept of buy one, sell twice, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think a guy named Jack Butcher um, from Visualize or something, uh, Value Visualize or something like that, uh, he came up with that concept. Maybe someone else did, I don't know, but I, um, I first at least heard, heard of it from him. And, yeah. um, and, 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 the, and the initial concept is that you create something once. So let's say, for example, an ebook, right? Or yeah. a digital product. I've created it but I can sell it multiple times with very little input from our side. Most of it is essentially automated. So when it comes to software, for example, I mean, let's say, uh, uh, you know, Editor X or Adobe or whatever, you know, you're signing up for the software tool, you know, they've made it once. Yes, they're making it, working on improvements and all that, but essentially they've got the tool, they keep selling it, right? So that's sort right. of the thinking behind it. Very nice, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, that that makes sense. You use the very, I like the way that you, the the build once, sell twice. Um, <laughs> that I've never, I, I've heard what you said, said before, but I like the, the I'm going to steal it now. It is, <laughs> it is a Prince Lou and gross uh, uh, <laughs> term we were not, or phrase we were going to use. But all right, we've got about there nine minutes, go. man, and I, I want to be cognizant Ooh, yeah. of your time. Yeah, let's do it. Um, okay, where do I, what is what is the juiciest thing we can jump into the the last nine? I where's almost kind of want to give you, bit? yeah. Where's the taste? There's a lot of tasty bits, man. I was oh, I have so many questions, but um, <laughs> I guess I kind of almost want to uh, hand the reins over to you really quick. What are some things that either you have not been able to talk about or 
you think based on what our conversation was today what the final um like because i know as we're in this conversation there might be things on the tip of your tongue that i might not even have inquired about yet um what kind of direction would you like to take the last uh, nine minutes um yeah i mean uh, obviously there's a lot i mean we can maybe talk about uh, the client side on like um you know uh, a few things there on like how to get clients maybe it's uh, pricing maybe it's um i don't know i mean there's yeah. so much I, uh, yeah there's there's a lot of more conversations we need yeah but look, we can even wrap it up i mean whatever suits you all right trying to think so how has your pricing changed from your beginning of this journey to where you are today is <laughs> it still is it hourly is it project do you retain like what is pricing what has pricing looked like for you throughout your career let's start with beginning maybe you know uh a couple of years ago and then like today what's it look like let's let's try to categorize it like like that no oh, amazing amazing question okay so um let, let's start with um you know the four types so we've got fixed pricing we've got value-based pricing we've got hourly pricing we've got subscription based pricing so right w when i was starting out i was charging a fixed price you know and i st and i still actually do that for some projects today right so a fixed price you know i'm charging well a thousand dollars or two thousand whatever and up and up from from there and you charge a price a fixed rate you deliver the project boom done uh, hourly rate um is good so, so generally i don't do this i don't do hourly rates i don't think i've ever done that for an actual website but for certain marketing services i have so it's very good when the scope is undefined then you charge an hourly rate which is fantastic mm -hmm. as long as you you know it makes sense for both sides but generally i do not like it i've got a massive article on why uh, I think it discourages efficiency. Um, you know, it, it, it teaches you essentially to uh, not work smart. Um, for example, if you're creating a website, you know, and you're building it on, let's say, EditorX, for example, you know, it's like, man, you can create an amazing website in one week. You know, does that mean you need to charge, you know, for your time for one week? Or can you actually charge based on, you know, the actual value that you're actually delivering? Yeah, you know, different story if you're charging like $1,000 an hour or something like that. But I mean, come on, uh, very few people do that, right? That right. brings to the value-based pricing. And the value-based pricing I've done throughout the years. Um, more specifically, I would say the uh, after the first two years. So I first needed some experience to figure out what I was doing, figure out how my uh, websites were actually performing. And then eventually when I got to see like, hey, you know, these websites are actually doing pretty well. Let me increase my price now. You know, instead of charging a thousand or two thousand for a website, I can actually charge like three or four or five uh, from there because I know that it actually works. And then I can base it off of the value on what the business is making. Now, in terms of bringing it to now, um, so there's a couple of ones that I'm doing now between fixed value. And then the final one is subscription-based pricing, which is a fantastic, very interesting pricing model. I've actually got a video on that coming out, uh, you know, this month actually on that. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. So you get two types of the subscription-based pricing model. You've got the higher price, where someone might charge like five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars a month, um, mm -hmm. and then that includes like website design, marketing services, and so on. Then you've got a very cool one, Brandon, and this is the smaller one. So this is where you would charge anywhere between fifty dollars to about two hundred dollars a month. Okay, and what you do here is uh, I know it sounds small, and it is small, but the, but the goal here is you work on template-based websites, so very fast websites, nothing that you can create like custom websites, right? And now you've done a few and you just keep pumping them out and the client pays you on a monthly basis, you know, no once or fees, it's more like a subscription so that when they cancel the, the subscription, they cancel the website. So it's basically like paying like a Netflix bill, basically, you know, and it makes sense when you and it makes sense when you've got about 30 to 50 plus clients. And it's amazing. I've got some uh, very interesting examples of businesses which do that very well because it can add up to a very nice number very soon because the reality is let's face it as a freelance or agency owner you can earn a great uh, income one month you might earn like an eight thousand ten thousand dollar website this month next month it's like oh i'm from zero great the next month you know it's like recurring income recurring yeah. income very very important so i hope that made sense i've tried to keep it as short as possible 
no that was beautiful man and i i think we can we can leave it on that like i i i want to also cap on the back of that like it sounds like your pricing isn't like oh i started here ended up there then it's <laughs> i my goal is blank therefore i use this type of pricing and yeah. i i love that and <laughs> what i'm realizing more and more as we, we we get to talk more often i'm like damn i'm dumb as hell <laughs> no <Jay. laughs> I was like, I need, I need to fly over. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm. I'm just realizing, guys. Like, if you have a chance to to somehow get some of Kyle's time, take some of his courses, or just like find out where he hangs out and listen and watch all the things that he pumps out, definitely do so. Um, because, uh, yeah, obviously, I have I've not capitalized on the the time that we've potentially had together to 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 actually talk so it dude thank you so much for having this hour with me and uh uh <laughs> listening to me vent in the beginning no uh <laughs> what's we call it yeah i just appreciate you taking the time to do this and talking about your beginnings uh you know how you you know got to where you are today building your sass baby that it will be uh launching in december which is awesome and uh specifically talking about pricing like i know subscriptions have been something that i have caught my radar i haven't paid too much attention to it because i don't know exactly who to implement it or how to implement it plus nor do i know where to grab the type of clientele that would uh want such a thing but hearing about it and how you explain it freaking beautiful dude and uh, i look forward to, to more conversations like this and um is there any last sentence goodbye hello uh thing that you'd like to say to the audience before we roll out today or where we, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, where we can sorry, find you ahead. too uh, yeah any uh anything you'd like to say in closing and then where we can find you on the interwebs <laughs> yeah well i mean uh, first of all thanks man uh, this was this was awesome and uh yeah i mean fantastic questions uh you know and and i hope some of the answers were were helpful um uh, to your audience Impeccable. <laughs> um and uh yeah um parting advice especially to the beginners uh don't don't overthink it you know i know it's hard and and uh, it's, it can go almost against like who you are in a way but the best thing that you can do is start and learn as you go you know because if you have the per perfectionist mindset trust me you're not going to be doing anything you know and it, once you realize that you actually need to know only such a just such a little bit to actually get started and actually do earn a side income with freelancing and stuff man you can uh really go far um in terms of uh, where to find me yeah i mean i'm, I'm on twitter uh my name carprinsu and uh also have a i don't know if can i mention the community as well yeah uh, dude yeah that's not uh, even and, a question and, uh, and and i've got a community as well for freelancers agency owners freelancer x community.com or as my american friends would say it freelancer x community.com and uh yeah it's it's free community um you know trying to help a lot of people there it's really awesome and uh yeah love what i do so um it's a pleasure to be here all right man well thank you so much again and like kyle said follow him on everything join his community and uh wherever you can find him follow him all right guys <laughs> i hope you enjoyed this episode and uh look forward to more episodes with kyle all right guys take it easy have a good day i hope you guys like this episode if you did you can find more build from scratch website tutorials with me right here or you can find more editor x tips and tricks in this playlist over here with that said i hope to see you guys in another video and of course if you like this episode and what we're doing here on this channel don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel see you in the next one